Hello. The words of God for our meditation today are from the Gospel for this Sunday, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that hour. <clears throat> our Lord, our God, our God of mercy and God of peace, tells us in Psalm 50, verse 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. He tells us in 1 Peter 5, verse 7, Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. These are some great promises of God that have filled millions of people with comfort over the years. Right? God wants to hear us. He wants to help us. He cares for us. He's a God of power. He's a God of mercy. That, right? They fill millions of Christians throughout the centuries with joy and comfort. But what happens when it seems that God is ignoring us? What happens when we prayed to be healed or we prayed for a loved one to be healed of a sickness and we or they don't get better? What happens when we pray for our marriage, but things get worse? What happens when we pray for God to deliver us to, from temptation, but we fall into the same sin again? What happens when our eyes can't maybe see the love of God and our hearts don't feel it? Well, we're going to see today that a great faith is based not on, on just what we see, not on what our hearts feel, not on what our reason thinks, but what God clearly states in his written word is that directs us to the trust, despite the appearances of things, in the unending and unfailing mercy of God. So the woman in our lesson for today was a Canaanite. If you remember from the Old Testament, if you've ever read that before, the Canaanites were enemies of the Old Testament people, especially because they worshipped false gods. But this Canaanite woman didn't share the faith of other Canaanites. She was actually a believer. How do we know this? We know this because of the words that she said to Jesus. Well, Jesus said, great is your faith. But she also addressed Jesus. She said, Lord, have mer or Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, a thousand years earlier... God had promised King David that the Messiah, the Savior, would come from his family line. So son of David was a title confessing, you are the Messiah, you are the promised one. So this woman had faith. And she also cried out and trusted in God's mercy, right? That God looks with compassion and help on those who are suffering and in a situation where they cry out and need help. And so this woman is a believer. And she had a major problem. Her daughter was suffering terribly from demon, is being tormented by a demon. If you have children, you might know what this is like a little bit. Like right when your child is suffering and all you can do is watch. You don't know what to do. Maybe there isn't anything you can do. Wow, the, the heart of this woman must have just been going out desperate for help. But now Jesus is there, right? Jesus is there in the area. And so her problem, her helplessness, she can take right to Christ. And she does. She goes to Jesus. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. But Jesus did not answer a word. He didn't give her an answer. Is that surprising? Uh, he didn't answer her, but, but he kept going like she wasn't even talking. He didn't answer. Doesn't it seem, seem, it's not reality, but doesn't it seem that Jesus was being 
harsh and unloving and like he didn't care. The woman was going to need to press on and cling to what she had heard about Christ, right? Those words are what the Old Testament had said and cling to the mercy of God. But the disciples join in and they're like, Jesus, send her away. She keeps crying out after. She's bothering us. And then Jesus said, I was sent only for the lost sheep of Israel. And this came for the Israelites. Now, it is also true, we even know this from the Old Testament, that salvation for everyone really comes from, from, from Christ. But it is also true that he was born there in Bethlehem and, and his main area of ministry was there in Galilee. And his main priority when he was here was to preach uh, and, and to teach and to live among the Jewish people. The disciples would go take that out into the world. Uh, but he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman comes again with persistence and perseverance, down, right? And down on her knees, kneeling, Lord, help me. What a great prayer, by the way. Sometimes we don't even know what to say, and we just go, God, help me. Continuing to trust in the mercy of Christ. But then God, Jesus says this, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Wow. What Jesus is saying here is, right? well, you, you get it. It's not right to take, you don't take bread and feed it to dogs when it's meant for the children sitting at the table. What he's saying here, that the children at the table are, are, are the Jewish people, the Israelites, who he primarily did his work among. It's not right to, to take what's for them and toss it to the, uh, to the, to the pets under the table. The, the word in Greek there is really like the pet dogs under the table. Um, right? It, I came primarily for the Jewish people here during my ministry. But she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Yes, Lord, there's help, even for us Gentiles. And Jesus responded, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. You see here, not Jesus knew this woman. As a son of God, he already knew her faith. But here he tests her for her own good and for the good of the disciples and for our good reading this today, right? Uh, for the woman's faith, even deepening her, making her cling even harder to the word of Jesus that she had learned, right? That son of David, and to the mercy of God, even though it appeared that God was kind of turning around on her and not listening, right? It was good for the disciples that, you know what? Here's a great example of the faith. It doesn't depend uh, right? What what race you are or, or, or where you're from or whatever. Here's a great example of faith from this Canaanite woman who trusts in me. And today we benefit from hearing this a great example of faith too. And knowing that this great faith clings to the promises and mercies of God uh, and simply trusting in his word. And so brothers and sisters in Christ, a, a great faith trusts in the words of of our compassionate Savior as they are written down in Scripture and clinging to that mercy of God. Now, this woman, her knowledge of the Bible wasn't as deep, of course, as the experts of the law, right, that lived in Israel and that knew all this stuff backward and forward, had all these verses memorized, right? Her knowledge wasn't as deep, but boy, was her faith ever deeper. Many of them rejected Christ, but this woman simply clings to Christ. She knew that the Messiah would come from King David. She trusted in the mercy of Christ. She had knowledge, right, of the Old Testament scriptures. And she trusted. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want you to think today when, when Jesus didn't respond a word to her. Are there times in your life when what we hear about Christ in the word clashes with what we think and what we feel and what we see. Do you trust what your eyes see? Do you trust what your heart feels? Do you trust what your reason thinks? Or do you cling, as God wants us to, to the words of Scripture? You see, what happens when we pray to God and our marriage gets worse and our sick sickness gets worse? We lose a job and our life gets tougher. 
Aren't we tempted to think, maybe what's the point? Or maybe God doesn't love me a whole lot. Or maybe God's too busy or whatever it is. Maybe God isn't, doesn't care for us. Maybe he doesn't want us to call on him. Well, of course, we know that's not true because the Bible says that. But aren't our hearts tempted to just doubt the words of God and cling to what we see, feel, and think in our own mind? God calls us to look outside of ourselves and to look to his cross and to trust in his word. See, when we come to Christ thinking maybe he's not listening to us because of our sin, well, it's definitely true. We don't deserve to be listened to because of how we are, our sin. It's true that the Son of God took up that our sin for us and took it away and gave us his righteousness, made us, our, made us his children in baptism because that's what God said. And we can hold him to that. Like Romans 8 verse 1 says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Right? When we're suffering and God doesn't give us the answer that we would like, we remember the words of 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. My strength is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And when, and when it feels like God is leaving us alone, we go to the words of Hebrews 13 5, where God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. We have the same Savior that this Canaanite woman has. A Savior who cares about our problems, accompanies us in our weakness, and forgives all of our sins. We have a God who loves us. Trust what you've learned about him in his word. Trust in his mercy because those who trust in him and his mercy will never be put to shame. Even if it feels like we are. Let's cling to that. Let's cling to Christ and his cross and see his love for us there. And many times in our life, we do also have to admit, we do see God's prayers answered, maybe even as we wanted. And if you need help seeing this, perhaps it'd be good to talk to older, more mature Christians who've been through things and see how God has delivered them and helped them in difficult situations in the past. And give thanks to God for that. But we do know that God does always help us in, our, in his own time. Even if our life gets worse and worse. You see, we only need to look at examples from the Bible from this. You know, think of those disciples. Did many of them suffer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Many of them were put to death for confessing Christ. Did God abandon them? Of course not. Or just think about the Son of God, Jesus himself. He actually was abandoned for a moment by the thought, right, for that time on the cross when he cried, Oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But that abandonment was temporary and was for your good. Jesus suffered too. He cried, Lord, if there's any way, take this cup from me, the suffering, but not as I will, but as you will. It was the will of God that he would suffer to redeem us from all of our sins. And that's the kind of God that we have. So even when our health fails and our problems seem to overwhelm us, God does care. He says that. And he is going to make it all right. If not here on our earth, if our eyes don't ever see it, then always in eternity. So cling to Christ and his word. He will work all things out for your good. Thank God for that. Amen.